Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. He is a great God. I'm so excited to be here bringing the word of God to us. I'd like you to open with me to Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 17. We have it on the screen as well. I'd like to read for us. The Bible said this. So the whole assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made boots and sat under the boot. For since the day of Joshua the son of Nun, until that day, the children of Israel had not done so, and there was great gladness. Father, we thank you so much for you bring great gladness. A lot of heaven as we look into your word, Lord, I pray, may you rekindle your fire in us. May you revive us. May you do something beautiful. The Lord, we will rise up to build to the glory of your name. Holy Spirit, help me to bring this word with clarity, in simplicity and authority to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, here at AOM, our vision is very simple. It is very clear. Our vision is to do what? To raise up anointed disciple makers who are empowered to change their world for Christ. Say with me, I'm an anointed disciple maker. I'm empowered to change the world. And the Holy Spirit has given us empowerment. And he's using us and he's bringing testimonies wherever we go. And this year, by the grace of God, has there been a vision we are running with? And that vision declares that this year is our year of enlargement. God is enlarging us on every side. God is increasing our influence. God is connecting us. God is bringing new things in our lives. And it's important for us to tune in to what God is doing. Hallelujah. Say with me, this is my year of enlargement. There is power in spoken word. When you declare a thing, it shall be established. I want you to say this convincingly. This is my year of enlargement. And I believe God is enlarging us on every side. And I pray, may God enlarge your influence. May God increase your ministry. May God expand your capacity. May God grant you ability to be a builder for the kingdom. As you move and enlarge the vision God has given you. Hallelujah. Amen. We started a series in this book of Nehemiah. The series is titled, Building for Enlargement. God wants us to build and bring enlargement. Amen. And that is what God is calling us to build and bring enlargement. This sermon series kicked off with a message titled, Breaking for what is broken. If you're going to build, you must allow God to break your heart Amen. for what breaks his heart. Amen. That whatever that is broken, that will break your heart for those things. But you cannot stop at having a broken heart. You must rise and build what is broken. You must rise and take action. You must rise and do something about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And two weeks ago, we looked at a message that was tied to rebuilding the people. So I have no doubt God is raising international ministers. Men and women of God have been traveling around the globe, winning shows for the kingdom and making impact. God is raising professionals that will be exceptional in their area. God is raising world-class CEOs and NGO leaders. But you must understand one thing. God will give you people and you must build them up. It's not just about building the vision. It's not about executing what God has given you. There are people you must build up. That they will rise with you. And I pray may every person connected with you rise with you. May every person you lead rise with you. May any person that comes to volunteer work with you, may they rise with you. May you attract the right people in your life that will do great things in your life. Hallelujah. And last week we took a break because it was a special Sunday, Mother's Day, hallelujah. What a fire, fire message that was. God spoke through her servants. And this Mother's Day sermon, so powerful that we must guard our hearts. Today, we're restarting this series again. 
with his message titled, Rekindling Your Spiritual Fire. Say with me, Rekindling Your Spiritual Fire. Say with me, Spiritual Fire. Say with me, Fire, Fire. Say, God wants you to be on fire for him. God wants you to be on fire. God wants wherever you go, the devil will be running away. Wherever you go, demons will flee. Wherever you go, darkness will disappear because you carry the fire of God. Jeremiah said, your word is like a fire in my bone. I cannot contain. I pray may God set you on fire. So much you cannot contain the fire that you carry. That your generation will hear your name. People from other nations will hear your name. Generations unborn will hear your name. Because of what God will do in your life. Say with me, fire. 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 That's what God wants to do. He wants to rekindle our spiritual fire. He wants to do something beautiful in our lives. But if you're going to allow God to rekindle your fire, you must first and foremost understand this. That rekindling your spiritual fire requires knowing your state. You must know where you are. Fire doesn't just happen by accident. You must know where you are. You must understand your, the position of your heart. You must understand what is happening in your life. You must take stock. The Bible said of Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 5. The Bible said Nehemiah spoke that God put in his heart to gather the nobles, the rulers, the people that they might be registered by genealogy. Nehemiah had just returned. They started rebuilding the wall. They have finished the wall. And he has been able to reestablish the relationship of the people in that place. But God did something. God put in his heart to do something. Take stock. Who is here? Who is here? Who are the people who are here? They had a census. And I'm asking you a question. What is your spiritual temperature? What is it? Is it as cold as ice? Or is it boiling? How is your prayer life? How is your love for God, your passion for the kingdom? How is your desire to be with other believers? Where are you? If you're weighed on a balance, where will you stand? Being busy with church doesn't make you be on fire. Fire happens in the closet. Where you and God wrestle. Where you allow God to just slay you in the spirit. Will you spend hours studying the word of God? You're so in love with his word. The fire. Take stock. And something happened. When Nehemiah did the census, he discovered a few things. He counted all the people. They were the rulers, the clan leaders, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeeper. He counted everybody. And the Bible said there were over 42,000 people. In the assembly. Over 7,000 servants and over 200 singers. Altogether, there were 49,942 people. He counted to the last person. He took it serious. Say with me, I will take stock. I will examine my life. I will examine my life. He didn't just count only people. He counted the animals. I would say he counted the horses, the moves, the camels, the donkeys. He counted everything. And there were about 800, exactly 8,136. 8, he counted everything. I want to ask you that question again. If a thermometer is used to measure your spiritual temperature, what would it be? Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. He told them, examine yourselves. 
as to whether you are in faith. Examine yourself. Say, I will examine myself. Examine yourself. I like the way message translation put it. It's so beautiful. He said, do, do, do that. Do that so that you don't just drift along. Taking everything for granted. Give yourself regular checkup. So if you want to be on fire, you must give yourself regular checkup. Allow God to examine your heart. Allow God to do something. Check where you are in your journey. You don't just stop at taking stock. Examining your life. Rekindling your spiritual fire requires gathering together with other believers. Say, I will gather with other believers. See, being secluded in your school, being in quarantine doesn't disconnect you from other believers. Glory be to God, there is technology. There is koinonia on Tuesday, you can tune in. There is church going on every Sunday, you can tune in. You can interact with people. And in some locations, the lockdown is easing up, which means you can connect with people. And that's why the Bible said in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1, what did Nehemiah do? He said, he gathered together as one man in the open square. He gathered everybody together. They all came together. They came as a people in one place. And they were connected. Be connected. Be connected. There is this beautiful quote from Vince Hanva, he says, no fakes are frail. But if enough of them get together, they can stop traffic. Snowflakes are so simple. If you take one, you can just melt it just with your hand. But if enough of them gather together, they can stop what? Traffic. They can block the road. They can stop and that's why it's important as believers that we must be connected. The Bible says, iron sharpens what? Iron. Iron sharpens iron. If you want to keep your fire on, you must allow other believers to sharpen you. I want to tell you something. When people sharpen you, it will not be funny. Sometimes it can be painful. But you're going to be sharp. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be better. Don't forsake the gathering of other believers. Don't forsake it. If you're going to keep your fire on, you must always be excited to be connected with other believers. Must be excited. It's not just like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. It's, no, no, you must be excited. David said, I was glad. I was excited. If you look at the original word, he was so thrilled when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. He was so excited to be with other people, to come and worship together and enjoy their fellowship and allow God to do something in their life. And I pray, may God grant you a passion for fellowship. May God rekindle your fire for fellowship. That you don't give excuse. You can easily find excuse why you shouldn't be there. But when you're passionate about it, no excuse can stop you. Not even snowfall can stop you. Not rain, no rain can stop you. Because you're excited to be connected with other believers. And that's what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to rekindle our fire. He wants to rekindle our fire. You see, there's this in an illustration you know, in the village, you know, sometimes when they cook food, you use firewood. If you put one fire and you put a couple of firewood into it, it will be burning. But if you bring out one, it may still be burning. But over time, it's going to die. Are you a lone ranger? Are you just out there doing your thing? It may look as if you're still on fire. But that fire is dying gradually. The good news about that, if you take it back, where all the other fires are, the other firewoods, 
it will still catch fire again. And I pray, may you catch fire again. If your fire has gone down, may you catch fire again. If your passion has gone down, may you catch fire again. If your desire and your zeal has gone down, may you catch fire again. The scriptures say, the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. And I pray may the zeal of God consume you. That the things of God will drive you so much that people will be saying, what is wrong with you? And you can say, the Holy Spirit is pushing me. The Holy Spirit is doing something in me. The Holy Spirit, fire is burning in me. I can't keep quiet. I can't keep quiet from sharing the gospel because there is something that is burning in me. I can't stop helping people. There is something that is burning in me. I can't stop moving and advancing the kingdom because there is something that is happening in me. The fire of God. And I pray may that fire fall afresh on you today. 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 That that fire will renew and rekindle and recharge your spiritual life. And you begin to operate on a new dimension. The fire of God. And that fire is available for every one of us. It's available. Thirdly, rekindling your spiritual fire requires embracing the centrality of God's word. So you cannot rekindle the spiritual fire without the word of God. This is the center. I remember a time in university, a lot of things were happening in my life. And that was the time the, the experience I had with God was second to none. Those days I would spend hours just reading and praying, reading and praying. There are all kinds of revelations. All kinds of encounters. So God is hungry to commune with you. I said, come, let us reason together. He's inviting you into the holy chamber. Say, come, let us reason together. Come. I want to show you great and mighty things you do not know. I want to reveal the secrets of the kingdom to you. I want to guide you. I want to lead you. You must come and listen. I can assure you, if you spend time with God, you will never remain the same. If you just invest time in the word of God, you will never remain the same. We must read and listen to the word attentively. Read. Read. And what happened when they were all gathered together? The Bible said Ezra read from the book of the law. And the people listened attentively. He opened the book and he read it. And they listened attentively. So when we talk about reading the word of God, it's not just read so that I can post in my community group. Read that God will speak to you. And then you can encourage somebody when you post. Read, study the word of God. You can't just stop at reading, you must study. Study requires going deep. Understanding what is happening, what is the contents, what is the story. Taking notes, writing. Say, I will study the word. Study the word. Every person that God used to bring revolution, to bring revival, they lock themselves up studying the word of God. It was as Martin Luther was studying the scripture, he bumped across what scripture said and it came alive in his life and everything changed. 
Just read men of old. As they dig into the word of God and something comes alive. Kenneth Hagin read the word of God and something came alive in him. And I pray as you read the word of God, as you study the word, may the word come alive in you that you cannot contain it. May you catch a new revelation of heaven that will set you on fire and position you for your generation. Study the word. The Bible said, as they read the scripture to the people in Nehemiah chapter 8, 7 and 8, the Bible said they helped them to understand it. They gave them the signs. They helped them to understand the reading. It's one thing to read. It's another to understand. And it is by studying that you will understand. And I pray may the Holy Spirit, the best teacher, teach you. That as you study the word of God, he will do what he will teach you. He will teach you. The word of God doesn't stop at reading or studying. You must do the word of God. Say, I will apply the word. Say, I will do the word. Say, the word of God works when you work it. The word of God is alive. It is sharper than any two edges saw. The word of God can bring transformation. The word of God can change things. But if you do not apply it, it will not work. You must apply the word. James said, may we not just be hearers of the word. May we be what? May we be doers. Do the word. The word works. Say with me, the word works. Apply the word. And when they read in chapter 8, verse 14, the scripture said, they found written in the law, which was read to them, the Lord that Moses commanded. That what happened? They discovered that the children of Israel should dwell in booths. They should dwell in time during the feast, that particular feast. And this is a very important feast, the feast of booths. Sometimes it's called the Sukkot. The tabernacle, the feast of tabernacle, the feast of shelter, the anger dream. What normally happens is a week-long event where the Israelites would come out and make temporary booths outside their homes. And they would eat there. They would stay there for a week, remembering their journey in the wilderness. And immediately they read it. Scripture said they went and did exactly the same. In verse 16, the Bible said the people went out and they brought what was needed and they made boot for themselves. And I pray may God grant you the grace to be a doer of the world. Immediately, they applied it. They did something. And I pray that God will just do something very special in our lives that will rekindle our love for God and for his word. Fourthly, if we want to experience this rekindling of fire, if you want to experience this spiritual fire, we must learn to pray differently. Say, I will pray differently. You must learn to pray differently. A lot of times our prayers are typically like going to the bank and trying to make a demand on God. Going to the ATM to withdraw. We're coming with a list of what we want God to do. See, I want you to know something. Even before you open your mouth, God knows the list. Amen. We come with our list and we'll be screaming, God, where are you? He said, I'm here. What are you doing? He said, I'm doing something. Why are you not answering my prayer? God, answer me. And God, he said, I'm here. I've already answered I said, why they were here speaking, Isaiah declared, I heard. Before they asked, I answered. Oh, I pray may God grant you revelation. 
May God grant you revelation to understand there is a God who cares about you more than you care about yourself. And every day in your life is so then is planned in his life. And that God is ordering your steps. He's ordering your steps. So your prayer life must change. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 6, the Bible said when Ezra got up to pray, what did he do? He blessed the God Almighty, the great God. He came with an attitude of praise. He came to pray in a different way. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. I want to give you a challenge. For the next seven days, don't make a request. Just go before God. Just go before God and let him deal with you. Just go before him. Just praise him. Adore him for who he is. Acknowledge his greatness. Thank him for what he has done in the past. Just focus on who he is. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to minister to you. Don't be in a hurry to leave his presence. We rush in. Say what we need and we run out. And God is saying, "Ah, I want to give you the secret for today. May you never miss the secret of your life. May you not miss it. Spend time, allow God to speak to you. Pray differently. Remember at this time when they were praying, there was famine in the land. If you remember two weeks ago, there was famine. There was no food. So instead of them just asking for food, they went to bless God. And as you bless God, the windows of heaven shall open unto you. And I pray, may the windows of heaven be opened unto you. Let it rain mightily over your life, over your finances. Let it rain mightily that you don't have enough room to contain what heaven will release to you. There is so much God wants to release to you. There is so much heaven wants to unrelease to you. And he said, can you give me a minute? I want to talk to you. I want to show you something. I want to give you direction. I want to give you direction. And one of the reasons when we pray, we pray the way we pray is because we are anxious. We are anxious. We're worried about tomorrow. And that's why Paul wrote to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. He said, do what? Be anxious for Nothing. Say with me, nothing. nothing. So be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to who? To God. And what will happen? The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. And I pray may the peace of God guide your heart. May every anxiety disappear. May every worry disappear. May every cares of life disappear. May the shalom of God envelop your heart that you begin to pray in a different way. Thanksgiving. God has been good to you. He's been good. More than good. More than good. I appreciate him for that. Not only you must pray differently. Rekindling your spiritual fire requires worshipping God extravagantly. Amen. Say, I will worship God. I will worship Say, I will worship God. I will worship God. Say, I will worship God. You must learn to worship God extravagantly. David declared, I don't mind looking foolish 
I don't mind being undignified. I don't mind being insulted. I don't mind, I don't mind what people say. My makeup may mess up, I don't mind. My clothes may be dirty, I don't mind. I don't mind what people will say about who I am. But there is one thing I am concerned. There is a God in heaven who deserves to be worshipped. And I'm going to worship him anyhow. You may not like my dance style. But I'm just going to dance unto God. I don't mind. I will lay before him in worship. For he deserves all the glory. He deserves all the glory. And as Nehemiah, with the people and Israel read the scripture, the Bible said they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They bowed down with their faces to the ground. This is very important for us to understand. See, they didn't meet in an auditorium with red carpet. They met in an open place, which meant the area was dusty. Don't come into the presence of God and be a VIP. Very immovable people. The place was open field and they bowed with their head on the floor. Even with the dust. Oh, I pray may you catch a passion for worship that even when you're wearing white, you forget you're wearing white. That you worship God with your whole being. Your spirit, soul, and body engage. That you're so lost in worship, you don't even hear people around you. You may be alone in your house, but you're worshiping God extravagantly. You're worshiping, you're playing worship music, you're singing, you're dancing, you're lying, you're rolling on the floor. You are there with God and God alone. And I pray, may you catch fire for worship. May you catch fire for worship. That you spend hours in worship and you will forget who you are. You even forget time. I like this quote from some storms. He said, Worship is a feast. In which God is the host, the cook, the waiter, and the meal itself. Worship is about God alone. It's not about your worship team. It's not about your worship leader. It's not about the instrument. It's not about the ways you sing. It's all about who? God. Your focus is on him. If you think your voice is not good, God enjoys your voice. Amen. He's the one that made it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there are some of us who can sing on stage. And there are some of us who sing alone. And God honors those worship. Hallelujah. God honors them. And my prayer is this. In my generation, stones will not worship God. As long as I live, stones will not worship God. You see, when people were worshiping God, they told Jesus, ask them to keep quiet. And he said, even stones can rise and worship. You see, when men don't worship, the things created will worship. And I declare that stones will not worship God in my generation. I, I see an army of worshippers rising. I see a generation of worshippers rising. Men that their voices, women that their voices will go around the globe igniting fire in the life of people, bringing people into encounter with God by the gift God has given them. Fire by worship. And I pray may that fire be rekindled in your life. Let it be rekindled. The psalmist said in Psalm chapter 5 verse 7 that in reverence I bow down. 
the reverence. I bow down. I bow down. We must learn to bow down and worship. Bow down and worship. Bow down and worship. Allow God to just do something very special in your life. Bow down and worship. Just bow down and worship. Just stay in His presence. Makala bruske de bruskaya. Bow down and worship. And as you worship, you must come with a very special heart. You must come with a repentant heart. A heart that is ready to be broken by God. The Bible says, when Ezra read the scripture to them, what happened? That their hearts were broken. They wept as they heard the word of God. When last did you cry before God? So typically, I don't cry a lot outside. But almost every time when I spend time with God, I can't control my tears. I like God to just do something special. Allow the Holy Spirit to envelop you. Whatever it is you've done in life, I want to tell you God can forgive you. He's a loving God. You must come with a repentant heart. That is this quote, Anonymous, I saw you say, repentance is always difficult. And the difficulty grows greater with delay. Delay is dangerous. It's dangerous. When you step outside, the Holy Spirit will always call you. If you delay to repent, the more and more you delay, the more it will be difficult. The more you begin to justify it. The psalmist said in Psalm 51 verse 7, a broken and a contrite heart, this, O Lord, you will not despise. Come with a broken heart, a contrite spirit. Say, God, here I am. Here I am. I don't know who this is for. You've, you've really messed up. Right now you feel like you're beyond the saving grace of God. You feel so far away you can't even sense the spirit. Actually you used to operate so much in the things of God. But right now you feel so far away. There is a God who is calling you who loves you. He wants to revive you. He wants to put that fire once again in you. He wants to set you on fire once again. He's calling you. He's calling you. This is the day to receive this rekindling. This is the day. This is the day. Let God break your heart. Let him do something in you. And finally, we must understand this. That rekindling your spiritual fire requires celebrating the goodness of God. So you can't just stop with repentant heart. You must celebrate the goodness of God. You can't just stop with crying. You must rejoice. You can't just stop with shedding tears. You must be able to dance and praise God for his goodness. In Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, as the people were weeping, Ezra spoke to them and said, do not sorrow. 
For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And I just pray for that joy to be infused upon your life right now. That you're feeling weak, may that joy strengthen you. May that joy carry you. May that joy empower you. May that joy cause you to begin to dance. May that joy give you joy unspeakable. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Whatever you're struggling right now, I want to tell you the answer is in your rejoicing. The answer is in your celebration. You may not see the end, but you can celebrate the end. You might not see the end, but you can celebrate the end. Because you know surely, as long as God liveth, who rules over the affairs of men, he is going to bring you through it. I'm telling you, as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are coming at the end of the tunnel. I'm telling you, you might be in your darkest moment, you're stepping out into your life. It doesn't matter where you are right now. God is moving you forward. Can somebody scream forward? You're moving forward. You're moving forward. You're going to dance yourself through it. Oh, Jesus. Makalaba senderebos kaya. Ramas kayaba. As Paul was writing to the church in Philippa, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Say always. always. Say always. always. Say always. always. Say rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Oh, say I will rejoice. Say I will dance unto the Lord. Say I will praise my God. I will celebrate my God. No problem can stop me. No challenge can stop me because there is the fire of God in me. I will rejoice. The devil cannot steal your joy. He cannot. He cannot. He cannot. And that is what revival does. Revival brings joy. I can remember the Toronto Revival. People were laughing and rolling on the floor. People, the joy of God was so much. And I pray that you will encounter revival. And that revival will bring joy. In verse 17 of chapter 8, the Bible said, that there was great gladness. There was great gladness. But you cannot experience this great gladness if you don't know Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. If you're here and you don't know him, the first step to revival is knowing him. Amen. Knowing that he died on the cross for you. He paid the price. And he's calling you home. So I want to do something. I want to use you. If that is you, you can just raise your hand. I'm just going to pray for you. You can also just click on the screen. Click on the icon by raising your hand so that someone can contact you. I want to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for every person that is making a commitment to follow after you. For every person that is coming to you and say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I pray may you receive them. May you embrace them. May you draw them to yourself. Lord of heaven, may you do something beautiful in their lives. Wash away their sins. Let their names be written in the book of life. King of glory. Empower them to live a life of victory. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the glory, Lord. 
We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Congratulations for making that prayer. Congratulations. 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 And I just encourage you to reach out to the church. We'd like to pray with you. We'd like to walk with you. We'd like to help you make a decision. We'd like to journey with you as you grow in your walk with God. Thank you, Father. And for all of us right now, I want to just pray for us. And as we take this song, wherever you are, I want you to just put your hand in your heart. Ask God to set you on fire for him. Ask God to set you on fire. That God will set you on fire for him. Ask God. Ask God to just do something special in you. That God will rekindle your spiritual fire. He will rekindle your spiritual fire. Just ask God to help you. You don't want to remain the same. You don't want to remain where you are. You want your spiritual life to take a new dimension. You want your spiritual life to take a new dimension. Do you want more of him? Make it your prayer. Say, God, I want more of you, Lord. I want more of you, Lord. I want more of you. I want more your fire, your fire, Lord. Your fire down in my soul. Just open your mouth and begin to pray for yourself. Repose a kettle of Lord, set us on fire. Set us on fire. Fire in our soul. Fire in our bones. Fire in our spirits. Fire in our body. Makala po setele bo. Rebo seke telebo, ma seke te, ribo seke teleba, ma hala ba sunelebo, re ma ma sakata, la pro seke te, rebo seke telebo, Lord set fire, Lord, fire in my soul, fire that I cannot contain, fire that is beyond my control, Holy Spirit, I want more of you, Lord, ma do seke telebo. Reposekete, Rabama Sutelebo, Mahala Paso Kete, Reposekete Lebo, Mekete Aba, Masutelebo, pray for yourself, 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 Reposekete Lebo, Rama Sutelebo Skaya, Oh God, set a fire, set a fire, set a fire, set fire, set fire in our soul. Makatalapa, Rima Shuteleboskade, Rabababa. Wherever you are, just begin, begin to pray in tongues if you can. Masakatalaboskete, Rebo Seketeleboskaya, Mahalaboskete, Rebo Sekete, Masundeleboskatayaba, Rekata, Mahalabosentelebo. Fire, fire. Oh, fire of God. Fire of God, fall afresh on us today. Fall afresh, fall afresh upon us. Mahe sekete lebo sekete yaba. Repo sekete. Lema sekete lebo. Repo po sekete lebo skata. Lehede. Rekindle your fire in us, Lord. Mahalapa. Hey, rekindle our passion for you. Ripa so ketele bo, maha le kete, rekindle, rekindle your fire in us. Let it fall on us afresh. Oh, we pray for your fire, Lord. Hey, hey, masakata, le bo se kete, hey, rakata, le bo se kete. Let it fall on us like the head of Pentecost. Maha la pa, masa kete, hey. Fire, Maya Catalabo, let the fire, let it fall upon us, Lord. Yeah, Jesus, 
Consumed by the consuming fire. Just put your hand on your head. I just see the fire of God coming on people right now. You're feeling a sensation in your hand right now. There is the fire of God falling afresh upon you right now. I see, I see the fire of God, tongues of fire coming upon you. Wherever you are right now, Makala Boske. Just put your hand upon your head and begin to pray, begin to pray. Just put your hand upon your head. There is a release of fire, fire from above, the fire of God from above, the fire of empowerment, the fire of transformation, the fire of renewal, the fire of God of heaven falling afresh on his people. Jesus. I want, I want 
see the heart of the spirit there is someone with a heart problem and just lay your hand on your heart right now you're going to begin to sense a heat sensation over your body right now God wants to bring healing to that heart oh Jesus in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for your healer. I speak a wholeness to that heart right now. I see someone with neck pain. It's a little bit way up on the head, towards the upper part of the head. It's very painful. God is healing you right now. God is healing you right now. That pain, I command you to disappear right now. In the name of Jesus. Rima Sokete Masakalaba. The fire of God brings healing. The fire of God brings healing. Maseke Telaboskaya. Hey. Makata. The fire of God brings healing. In fire. Consume fire. Running away. Let it burn away. Let it burn away. See someone, this is it's a lady. The age I see is above 40. And you're having a very sharp pain on your right waist. I want you to just touch it right now if that is you. God is bringing healing to that right waist. It's actually very painful when you walk. God is bringing healing to that right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that right waist. Receive the touch of heaven. Receive the touch of heaven. Receive the touch of heaven. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that pain to disappear right now. I speak healing. I speak healing to that right way right now by the authority in the name of Jesus be healed in the Jesus name oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord that he led me See, this service, we didn't plan healing, but God just does his thing. He just does his thing. Oh, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't I see this liver problem. And it runs across your family, not just you. It runs across the family. God is bringing healing. And God is resetting that in your family. Actually, God is not healing only you. He will heal other members of the family for your sake. 
close, Kelly. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just sense of my spirit, God wants to bring healing to families. Not just healing you, He's healing your family. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for your word, for your revelation. And I speak healing to these families right now. That which you have spoken, Lord, I pray may you bring them to fulfillment. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing across homes right now. Let there be healing across homes right now. Let there be healings across homes right now. In the name of Jesus. Makalabuski. Rabuske de bo katamande. Lepo seke de balabroske ya. Menusu intenengede. Me ele eke keke po simonde. Oh, I command you and I curse you to the root. All oh, your sickness, you have no permission in these homes. I curse you to your root. I speak healing. I speak healing to your children. Thank you, Father. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are, just begin to appreciate him. Just give him praise. Give him praise for setting you on fire. Just give him praise for rekindling your fire. Give him praise for putting his fire in your bone. Give him praise for putting his fire in your soul, in your spirit, in your body. Give him praise for rekindling your prayer life, your study of the word, your passion for the things of God. Just give him praise. Give him praise for his healing. For his healing. For his healing. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. Daddy, we are so grateful for your goodness, your kindness, for your grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The fire from above, mm. burn in our heart, burn in our heart. Use us for your glory and for the kingdom. We give you praise, Daddy. We worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.